You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R.com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn soybeans and more with so many tradable products the futures options market can be an intimidating place how can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products don't worry we've got you covered welcome to this week in futures options the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace each week we'll break down the top trades hot products volatility explosions and much more this week in futures options streams live so be sure to check out our live stream via the mixler app that's m-i-x-l-r or join our live chat room at mixler.com slash options dash insider whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. For more information and educational resources about Futures Options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. And now, get ready to break down the latest Futures Options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again for TWIFO, This Week in Futures Options, a program where the name says it all. We break down the week that was and indeed still is on the futures options and indeed the underlying future side as well. Going to delve into that a little bit, of course, this week as well. My name, of course... Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as from the network that is growing and expanding all the time, including the newest edition, The Futures Rundown. Check it out if you haven't done so. It airs every Wednesday on the network, one day ahead of This Week in Futures Options. If you want to check it out on demand, just subscribe to the full network. It'll all be there waiting for you. Blowing up the charts. Folks loving it out there. Hope you also liked our election night spectacular. Another reason to check out the full network. And if you want to go above and beyond, you want to join us for a little bit of pro action exclusive content just for you, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go as we keep on rolling right on into the movers and shakers report. It's time to find out what's rallying on the light side and falling to the dark side at CME Group this week. It's time for the movers and shakers report. All right, listeners, welcome to the Movers and Shakers Report, the portion of the show where we break down what's lighting it up to the light side and to the dark side over there at CME Group this week. Going to let you in behind the curtain a little bit. I am actually at our usual time tomorrow heading over to the SIBO to record some content over there. So recording this one day ahead of time, listeners, going to give you a Just the Facts, ma'am, edition. But just want to point that out. These numbers not going to extend through Thursday, as they normally do, listeners, but through the end of the session here on Wednesday, immediately after the election. So obviously a lot of shakeup, a lot of turbulence in these markets. Let's get down to business. And right now, if we look at the one week relative performance here over there at all the products on CME Group, it is actually surprisingly evenly distributed here this week. It's roughly 50-50 Dark side versus light side. You might be surprised to hear that because 
so many things out there are rallying immediately after the election, which is, of course, when we are recording this late in the session on Wednesday. Of course, equities rallying hard, but also many other categories coming in. We're seeing metals coming in. We're seeing FX take a drubbing out there. And of course, uh, other products beyond what trades at CME, like VIX and others, getting annihilated out there today. So that explains why we're seeing such a mixed bag, almost exactly 50-50 here on the CME this week. I will say, though, the dark side movers do have the largest percentage movers this week. So I think we'll start there this week. Number five to the dark side listeners is the real estate sector off 3.01%. Number four, out to the land of dairy. It is class three milk off three and a quarter percent. It was number one in the same direction last week off 4.09%. Number three, it's gold. So the metal's getting shellacked out here this week, listeners. Gold off 4.69%. That sounds like a lot, and it is, but you know what? Silver said, hold my bear, kid. Coming in at number two off 8.48%. If you thought that was a lot, and it is, Palladium said, all of you can hold my bear because I'm off 10.02% this week. It was number five in the same direction last week, off 3.21%. So, you know, these metals have had a great year, a great run. Not surprising that they're going to give some of that back right now, especially when the big event risk, the big uncertainty that was fueling a lot of this upside rally, especially over the course of the last few weeks to a month. Now that is at least apparently off the table now. We are, we are thankfully done with that, listeners, which was a big concern. A lot of people, myself included, had that we would not know the results for days, if not weeks, and this would spiral into a lot of uncertainty, a lot of political drama, un- hopefully not violence, but there was a lot of potential for some bad things to happen as a result of this. So the fact that it is not is what's giving these precious metals, the shiny stuff, having them lose a little bit of their luster, at least for this week. To the light side, we go now. Let's get cheerful. Let's get green. Let's get optimistic, listeners. Number five, we're going out to the equities. It is the financial sector of the S&P 500, up nearly 5%, 4.98%, driven by, of course, the prospect of looser regulation under a Trump regime. A lot of the banking stocks, financials, getting a nice lift today. And that's reflected in number five. Number four, Another sector that's looking optimistic for the Trump regime. It is Bitcoin. All things crypto really rallying right now. Doge getting a nice lift out there, listeners. All kinds of madness out there. Bitcoin, number four, up 5.11%. It was number four in the same direction last week, up three and three quarters percent. So a good couple of weeks here for Bitcoin hitting fresh new all-time highs on the heels of this result. Number three, soybean oil up nearly 6%, 5.98%. Interesting run. If you want to hear some thoughts about what's going on in soybean oil, again, cheap plug, go check out the futures rundown from yesterday that I recorded with our good pal on Twifo, Dan Gramza. He talks a bit about what's driving soybean oil and the economics there, what's going on with Chinese demand and Brazil and everything else. It's interesting. And then number two, we have our old pal, the Russell 2000, coming back with a vengeance up nearly 7% this week, 6.9% to the green, to the light side. And then the number one light side mover, this might come as a bit of surprise some of you out there, it is the energy sector of the S&P, up nearly 7%. We're seeing mixed bag on the energy front. Traditional energy, you know, your fossil fuels, your crude oil, your nat gas, getting the lift. Solar and renewables, maybe not so much. But then again, Trump, close pals with Musk, he does have some skin in that solar game, so maybe that'll change out there. But right now, uh, the energy sector up Nearly 7%. Let's get out to the CVAL movers and shakers. Remember, listeners, you can run this report for yourselves. It's really easy. Don't even have to go to the CME website. Just type CME and CVAL into your browser of choice. It'll get you there. It'll do all the work for you. It'll get you right to the dashboard. From there, listeners, you want to go to the aggregates tab at the top of the page there. Then you want to set your high-low range to line up for the week, so you want to go to that one-week range. Then I like an ordered list, but hey, you know, to each their own. Pick how you like to see your list. If you do that, listeners, you'd see what we have out here this week. At the top of our list this week, we've got the Ag Products CVAL 
20.34. Again, this is ordering it by the move for today, not the total value, which is why the treasury yield vol isn't at the top of the list every week. It's only by today's move. That's how they order the list, listeners. So ag product C vol 20.34 up about two thirds of a point today. And also pinning the needle to the upside for the week, the low was 18.63. Below it, we have the FX Seval at a 9.54, off 0.06 today. And on the week, the range was 960 to the upside, 906 to the downside. So close to pinning the needle for the week right now. Today's move taking a little bit off the top. Metals below that, 21.23, off 0.18 today. On the week, they have a range of 20.36 to the dark side, 21. 0.41, so close to pinning the needle there as well. Below that, we have the commodities aggregate CVOL, 38.26 right now, off 0.7 just today. On the week, they've had a range of 35.48 to the dark side, 38.95 to the upside, so again, close to the upper end of its band for the week. Below that, we have the treasury price vol, 9.66, off about 7 tenths of a point today as well. Pinning the needle to the downside for the ball range for the week. The high was 10.37 earlier this week. Below that, we have the energy C ball, a 61 even off 1.64 points today. On the week, it's had a range of 54.80 to the downside, 62.65 to the upside. And then at the bottom of our list, even though it is the largest overall value number, it is the treasury yield vol. By far the most volatile thing on our list here this week, listeners, and every week. 158.88 off 10.36 points just today. So again, talking about that election vol coming cratering in. On the week, that is the low for the week. The high was 169.23. So a pretty interesting week out there on the C vol front across the board, including in the treasury yield vol. And you know what? Before we get out of here for this week, let's tackle some of your futures options feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for Futures Options Feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at the options You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider Radio Network mobile app. Available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com. All right, everybody, welcome to the Futures Options Feedback, the portion of the show where you folks take the reins, your questions, your comments, your insights, your pearls of wisdom. You also chime in on our questions for you, which you've had a lot of of late out there, listeners, including some polls very much near and dear to the spirit of this show, what's going on in the underlying markets and how scary they could be. We know a lot of you are intimidated by just dipping your toes into the future's water. So we thought we'd ask you, did this last week on the show in honor of Halloween, what elements of the futures trading, the futures market in general, do you find the most intimidating? Uh, we gave you three choices and the infamous other, the confusing margin, the accidental delivery, which we have debunked, but it still floats around out there as a rumor, and then the weird and wild products that you have to trade, or is it something else entirely? And we actually had a, a very precise tie, an exact tie, 46.2% each between confusing margin, which I get. There's a lot of different numbers thrown at you. There's initial margin, there's maintenance margin, there's overnight margin. Some products have different long and short margins. It could be a lot for a new futures trader to digest. And then, of course, the, the prospect of accidental delivery. Even though we kind of joke about that in the intro to our futures rundown program, and we've kind of debunked it thoroughly on that show, you're not going to get a truckload of soybeans or lean hogs or whatever gold dumped on your lawn in the middle of the night. But people still persist in that fear. They still persist in that misperception in the futures market. And clearly, by our poll results, that is still a very strong fear. Nearly half of you out there. And then no votes for the weird and wild products. That was kind of strange to me. I thought for sure 
Sofer or Arbob or Livestock and you know, Lean Hogs, something of the more esoteric cash settled cheese. <laughs> some of this interesting stuff that you don't normally see quoted out there would probably throw some of you for a loop. But actually, 7.7% of you chose something else. A lot of different write-ins, including some of you saying you have a hard time. You're just scared of just predicting where the underlying is going to go. And I, I get that, especially if you're doing some very near-dated swing trading out there, intraday swing trading, then that could be a little bit challenging. It's scary. I could see that too. By the way, we also asked you, spirit of the season for option strategies as well. Which of these strategies scares you the most? Naked short straddles, naked short calls, naked short puts or others. We had a lot of write-ins for time spreads. That's a good one out there. There, there are a lot of moving parts to those. I get it. One wiseacre wrote in, he's scared of naked short people. <laughs> That cracked me up a little bit out there. To me, I said my answer was far and away the naked short straddle. It combines the worst elements of both of these trades. But no, you you folks in the audience chose naked short puts, 37.5%. I got to admit, that one kind of surprised me. Naked short straddles has both of them baked in. If you're scared of naked short puts, you should be far more scared of a naked short straddle. Because at the end of the day, a naked short put has a finite risk. Stock underlying can only go to zero, listeners. But yeah, that was the choice. 18.8% chose naked short straddles, my favorite. That was actually number three behind naked short calls, 31.3%. That one I get, infinite risk, that is certainly scary. That's why the short straddle scares me. But yeah, and then 12.5% going for other, I already mentioned, time spreads. And all of the other fun out there. Let's do a couple more here really quickly, then we'll get out of here for this. is just the facts, ma'am, edition while I'm recording live elsewhere, listeners, uh, we said right now, Vol is getting crushed. If you've listened to our futures rundown yesterday, you know that the front month VIX future is the, the number one overall downside mover for the week. Obviously, on this program, we only focus on what's going up on CME. We expand that purview on the futures rundown. Another reason why you should be checking that out if you are intrigued by all things futures. Uh, but we did ask you along those lines Earlier this week, someone traded 100,000 of the November 17 puts in VIX expiring on the 20th, so a couple of weeks from now. They traded for 85 cents. We said, hey, at that price, are you a buyer or a seller? And pretty much exactly two-thirds of you, 66.7% said you're buyers. I get it. I had some 17 puts in my back pocket ahead of this event as well. It worked out pretty well. And then the seller, 33.3% of you. So interesting choices out there. Also, another complex that is near and dear to the listeners of this program crypto coming on our radar this week for obvious reasons as well big movements new all-time highs as a result of the election results but earlier this week someone traded a hundred thousand of the dece 1575 13 15 put spreads in biddo for 63 cents if you know anything about biddo you know of course it uses the futures at cme to get its Bitcoin exposure. We said 63 cents at that price. Are you a buyer or a seller? Remember, if you're buying that put spread, you're probably bearish on the near term prospects for Bitcoin. If you're selling it, you're probably bullish or you want nothing to do with it. You just want to wake me when all this is over. And that actually is what ended up. Oh, actually, it's not over yet. It's winning right now with nearly 41 percent of the results choosing that exactly a third coming at number two for folks who want to buy it. So you're bearish on Bitcoin. I could maybe see that because it's cheap. Puts are cheap at the end of the day in Bitcoin. That's the only reason I would like that is a lower price level. At the end of the day, though, I, I like selling puts in Bitto more just for that reason. You can get in at attractive levels. It pays a hefty dividend. And it's a good wheel candidate because the calls are bid eventually too. So if you get the stock put to you, you can turn around and wheel out of it and do fairly well on that over and over again. And maybe you capture a dividend or two along the way. Either way, seller is coming in a distant third, 25.9% out there, which is kind of fascinating. All right, that is going to do it for our Just the Facts, ma'am, edition of Twifo this week. We'll be back at our usual bat time, usual bat channel next week with your usual a live show full of all sorts of updates from the markets. There's a lot to get to, so stay tuned for that. We'll see you back here tomorrow for volatility views, and then after that, for all of our pro folks, a little bit of options, oddies. And tell you what, to make up for not being able to do the show live for you this week, I will extend to you the bonus that I extended to all of our listeners of 
our election night spectacular. Just last night, a full three and a half hour extravaganza. If you stayed till the end of that, you got access to a little special bonus. We wanted to give you folks a reward for listening the whole three and a half hours. So we said, put some money in your pocket. What better way to, to do it than that? So we said, hey, if you listen to the whole thing, you want to check out the pro. Maybe you don't have the finances to do it. Maybe you were intimidated by, by that. Either way, we'll make it easy for you. We'll give you three months for free. That's $150 value. We don't usually do that or ever, really, listeners, <laughs> give away that much of the pro. So it's a good deal, a good little value. Maybe you're a little bit spooked. Maybe you're a little bit sad by the results of the election. Either way, we're here for you. Maybe you want to celebrate. You want a gift. Either way, I will extend that to the TWIFO audience as well. TheOptionsInsider.com slash pro. Use the code TRYPRO3, the number three, all one word. That'll get you $150 worth, three months off of the pro. That That's a pretty darn good deal. That'll get you all the exclusive shows we've ever done, all the archives, all the new shows. We do two a week, obviously. Pro Q&As with great futures minds like Dan Gramza and many others out there. You can pick their brains on any of these topics. They're fascinating, trust me. I've been there for all of them. Very fascinating. Then, of course, Options Oddities, where we highlight a lot of unusual activity out there. You definitely want to tune in for that if you want some actionable trading ideas. And, of course, giveaways, exclusive, all kinds of stuff. That'll get you three chances to win a pro trading crate. We give one of those away a month to one lucky winner. And trust me, they are cool. Everyone who's won them has always wanted to win more. There's unique, bespoke, often quite valuable stuff in each of those boxes. So... Sometimes I look at it, so we're giving that away. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind, mind keeping that. But uh, hey, you know, we give it out to you folks out there. So take advantage of our generosity. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Try pro three is the code. Back again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, stay safe out there, everybody. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. This broadcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute trading advice or the solicitation of purchases or sale of any futures or options. The rulebook of the applicable exchange should be consulted as the authoritative source on all current contract specifications. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.